Schlilly D, Schlilly D, Junk News. Hello! Welcome to Drunk News. This isn't your grandma's fucking news because we aren't, you know, old and don't remember things like her. So, my name is fucking Dr. Rodrigo Escobar. Today's guest is Liquorman's Old Dirty Canadian Whiskey. It's old, it's dirty, it's Canadian, and I think it's whiskey. It does get you drunk, though. In today's news, a student teacher was forced to undergo, undergo surgery to remove a 7-inch pink sex toy after it became lodged in her butt. Damn, how wide was that fucking thing? Uh, mother of one, Emma Phelps, 24, was feeling enamorous with partner Lee Miller, 29, during the early hours of Saturday morning when the toy disappeared. She thought her boyfriend had hidden it, but after pressing down on her stomach, she realized it was still inside of her and she felt it buzzing. Oh, that's fucking weird. Oh, why'd he let it go? What a dick. Mrs. Phillips from Wasabi Merseyside initially tried removing it at home using a fork handle and barbecue prongs, but failed. And bizarrely, she shared her experience by posting an update on her Facebook page while in hospital. Fucking freak. She wrote, When a bit of Saturday morning playtime results in spending the day in Wrexham Hospital, having a nice pink vibrator surgically removed from your bowel areas, whilst it's still vibrating, if you can't on a Saturday, when can you? At least she kept some humor about it. After being rushed to the hospital to have the toy surgery in her room, she's now speaking out to warn others not to allow embarrassment to stop them seeking help if they find themselves in a similar predicament. Miss Phillips said, We were looking be around the bed in case it had fallen out. A nest Fuck, how big is her butthole? It fell in there, he couldn't find it, now it might have fell out behind the bed. After initially seeing the funny sign, Miss Phillips said that uh, they quickly realized she would need a medical help. She added, we both been drinking the night before, so we couldn't drive. Bullshit, they were drinking that morning. I had to make the most embarrassing call to the ambulance at 7 a.m. Oh, fuck. It's, it would have been bad. The call handler said, tell me exactly what the problem is, so I had to tell him. Within five minutes, an ambulance arrived and the pair were rushed to Wrexham Mailer Hospital in Wrexham, North Wales. Doctors clipped Marie manually removed the dildo, so they had to perform surgery. And this woman, she teaches your kids, for, folks. Keep that in mind. So, yeah, we got a, something very special for you guys today. We're going to take it over an interview I did with uh, Shelly Thompson, a.k.a. Barb Leahy of Trail Park Boys. But due to some technical difficulties, the interview had to take place via email. And this is a dramatization of her answers. So, uh... Hi, Shelly. It's Shelly Thompson, everybody. It's really, really awesome that you could be with us here on the show. Hey, Joe. How are you doing today? It, it's Josh, but I'm good. I'm good. Anyway, so I guess we'll just get right into this here. Um, got a list of questions here. Uh, some are from the fans, you know, some are from me. Most of the really fucked ones are from the fans, so we'll save those ones for last. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll just we'll start off with the first one. How's that sound? That sounds good. Bad. All right, all right, Lickermans, all right. Oh, fuck the I, I saw the Lickermans. It's good liquor. <laughs> okay, so first question. Um, do, do, does she get recognized much when she's in public? Oh, by she, if you mean me, yes. I get recognized sometimes. Not a lot, but more than enough, if you know what I mean. Okay, okay. Um, uh, do you do any writing on Two Petty Roadkill? On Two Petty Road, no. Just acting only. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I know you write poetry and shorts. Uh, where, where can we find these? The, sh the, the shorts, they're still in the festivals right now, so they're not online. If maybe if somebody brings them to YouTube, we could see them. But And sometimes I put the poems on my website. If you go to the Shelley Thompson website, link below, you can read the poems and any other things I'm doing. Oh, okay, all right, right on. Good to know, good to know. Uh, moving along. Um, oh, how did you get involved with uh, Michael and Angelo show? I just I introduced. And, hey, excuse me. I just auditioned for the producer Neville Green. And I was cast. Look at me. <laughs> yeah, I can see why. I can totally see why. Uh, oh, what was uh, what was the favorite audio book that you recorded? I know you did some audio books. I'm going to have to say it comes between two. It's going to be Elias Grace by Margaret Atwood and Another Marvelous Thing by Laurie Colwin. 
hmm, I can't say I've heard of those, but I'll definitely have to check them out. <laughs> All right. Josh or Joe, he promised me he was going to put the links below, so no worries. Yeah, definitely. All the, all the links will go down below. Check everyone, you guys, check out the links below down there. Okay. Okay. Um, next question. Uh, oh, how involved did you get with uh, EastEnders show? Oh. Just went for an audition and it was really just cast. Nothing more to it than that. We didn't really write. Sorry, what? What? Can you, can you oh. repeat that? We, I just went for the audition and was cast. Didn't really do too much writing in that. We just, just more, more, mainly acting. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Sorry. Sorry. Uh. What? Uh. What made you go to the UK to train in theater? I tr I traveled to the UK as a teenager and I just absolutely fell in love with the country. It's a gorgeous country. The theater is where my heart always was, and the UK for me is the center of the theater world. So it just, it makes sense to train there, you know? Yeah, totally, totally makes sense. I get that. All right, okay. Um, uh, when you wrote Leaving Wonderland, uh, was that based on personal experiences? Um, a bit. A bit. I, I don't really want to get into it, but a bit. All right, all right. Cool, cool. Um, oh, is... Uh, is your kid uh, T. Thompson coming out with more music soon? Um, I saw that they had music on Degrassi, and it was uh, pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, that's, T. Thompson just released a new EP. It's available on iTunes. Go buy it. iTunes. All right, all right. That's T. Thompson coming out, you guys. Thomas. Uh, sorry. Thomason. Thomason. Oh, Thomason. My God. I'm, I'm into the liquor. I can't read my own writing anymore. Okay, Thomason, T. Thomason, my bad, my bad. That's all right. Okay. Um, oh, was, uh, somebody wants to know, was, was acting what you always wanted to do? Yes. yes. Totally, awesome, all right. Uh, does, uh, somebody wants to know, uh, does she have any prior acting vids we can search or watch, and uh, what is next in line for her? Um, you can check out the IMDP page for previous gigs, gigs. It has all my stuff on there. Some you can find online, some not. Next, I don't know. Nothing nothing at the moment. I, I, I'll never work again, I don't think. <laughs> I'm sure you'll work again. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> so how, how close is your real personality to that of your character, Barb Leahy? Not close at all. I, I, I hope. <laughs> No doubt, no doubt. Okay. Um, what uh, what is the most difficult scene that you had to film with ex hubby Jim Leahy? I have to say the scene where uh, Rand Jim and Randy both they had silly hard ons, and oh, they had these silly hard ons for each other, and Jim was kissing Barb me at the time. That was that was very difficult. <laughs> Oh, that, was a good, that was a good scene. That fuck, I fucking laughed at that. Like, oh. I have to adjust real quick. Hold on, I'm not, I'm asymmetrical right now. <laughs> Someone wants to know uh, if you like the show Black Jesus and if we can see you on that show. I I've never seen it, but I, I think I'll have to I'll have to look. I've never seen it though. Okay. Um... Uh, okay, uh, so someone wants to, uh, ask, um, what, oh, what some of the highlights have been working on the show, the, the Trail Park Boys, and, uh, how did you get your part in the show? I got my part in the show because Mike Plattenberg, he saw me on stage, he told me he wanted me, and then wrote Bard for me. Thanks, Mike. Mike Plattenberg, yeah, back in the day, back in the day. Okay, um... Oh, what was it like working with David Bowie, and did you get to talk to him a lot? Oh, that would have been so um, Nope. I, unfortunately, we, I didn't really get to work. I just passed him in the hall. Oh, that would suck. Fuck, even just being in the same room with him, with David Bowie, that, that must have been a fucking trip. It did, oh, make, it did make my underwear pretty wet. <laughs> awesome. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, uh, how was Jim? Yeah, this is a good question. How was Jim Henson to work with? He was a, a gorgeous, lovely, kind, patient human being. Just absolutely splendid. Absolutely splendid. I bet he would be. God, he's one of my favorite people. I was really sad when he died. Uh, how did you get involved with the Labyrinth film? Again, just auditioned. It was cast. 
good. All right, you must give really good auditions. <laughs> Hope they didn't have a casting coach. I have no uh, idea, honey. What is it like being the hottest chick on the show? Oh, well, thank you so much. It's, it's been a while since I've been called a chick. <laughs> or it, it could also be the first time I've been called one. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, oh, what other work have you done aside from TPB that we might know about? Uh, all kinds of stuff for BBC, the television station in England, CBC Radio, Theater at the Neptune, Festival uh, Antagonish, and the Prairie Theater Exchange. Lots of lots of small theater plays all over the stuff. You check my IMDb page, you'll see a lot. Okay. Um, oh, <laughs> okay. Here's here's another question from uh, from one of our our SwearNet fans here. Uh, ask her if she parties, and if she does, or has been a partier, can she tell us some interesting drug or, uh, or party stories? I am so not a partier. So not. I, I dislike crowded rooms a lot. They make me very anxious. Honestly, I'm deeply boring, and my idea of a good time is being alone in my house, right in with, with my pussy on my lap, and my husband upstairs working in their garden. Oh, excuse me. With my pussy, I mean cat. Excuse me. <laughs> All right. Hey, there's nothing wrong questions. with that. Everybody likes a little pussy in their lap. Am I right? <laughs> uh, okay. Um... If you could recommend one piece of media, books, documentaries, movies, ebooks, audiobooks, etc., for everybody on the planet to read or watch uh, or listen to, what would it be? Favorite movie this year is 45 Years. Great movie. Then The Dressmaker. Uh, favorite documentary, too sad though, is the Amy Winehouse story. I absolutely adored her. Oh, yeah, favorite so book, my favorite book this year was Life After Death by Kate Atkinson. Just brilliant, brilliant. I'd wish I went written it, but I'm I'm just not that brilliant. Oh, I don't know about that. You seem to be doing pretty well. Uh, okay. Uh, next question here. Uh, what? Oh, what was your first appearance on the TV or the movies? Oh. Oh, excuse. I I honest. Oh, I, I honestly okay. can't. Remember. All right. You don't remember? Oh, that sucks. I, I can't remember right now. Hmm. Where am I? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, next question. Um, oh, who is your favorite actor or actress on set to work with of the Trail Park Boys? Oh, Ricky. Rob Wells. Hands down. I loved him. Hands down. Yeah. Oh, it's hands down. Sorry. What made her move? What, what made you, you move from Labyrinth to Sunnyvale? I don't understand that question. I don't think I understand that question either. Let's skip it. That's all right. That's Labyrinth, all right. Labyrinth was a movie. Sunnyvale's a trailer park. That's two different things. This is true. This is true. I, I, I think somebody was smoking some devil's cabbage when they wrote that correct question. Possibly. Possibly. I, I, I wouldn't put it past them. Okay. Uh, next question. Um, oh, how much, uh, how much input has she had in your character, particularly from season eight and on? More input season eight, but less after that. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, what other projects are you currently involved in? Uh, working on several screenplays, animation projects, learning learning how to be constantly rejected. That's that's fun. That's part working, of the business, yeah. Working on a couple stage plays now, too. Cool, all right, all right. That's cool, right on. Um, what is your uh, relationship like with John Dunsworth? John is an absolute wild card, and he's a terrific, terrific actor. Good. All right. Um, what are your uh, What are your least favorite and most favorite boobs? Sorry, your, uh, most favorite moments from the show. Um, the least was the piss throwing episodes. That was disgusting. The most when I was bringing Ricky his lunches with his little joints in them. Okay. Okay. Um. Which episode for you caused the most uh, retakes due to breaking character with laughter? God, that must be hard. I, I truly, I truly can't remember. It just there's so many. They just loads. Yeah, I, I don't definitely. I that that's got to be hard shooting some of that shit without laughing. I don't think I could do it. That'd be fucking hilarious. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. Do you play any role in how your makeup is done or the clothes that you wear on the show? Yep. 
uh, discussions with wardrobe and makeup. As much as I input as I want, but Sarah Dunsworth has a great job selecting stuff for Barb. Okay, all right. Oh, hold on. Excuse me. I gotta readjust again. Okay. You're all good, bro. We're we're better now. We're better. All right. All right. Um. Okay. So, uh. Oh, when she was marrying Ricky and Lucy at the end of season one, did she ever expect to be such? Did she ever expect to be such the big character she is on the show now? Nope. Hmm. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, oh, uh, do you have any plans after TPB? Um, writing, 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 auditioning, and trying to get fit. We're going to do a lot of gardening and try to decide how to earn a living. All right. Good. Uh... So now we, we've, we've got through the, the, the normal question part here. Now um, we're going to get into some of the stupid ones. We usually save these ones till the end because, uh, well, we don't always make it through all of them, if you know what I mean. But um, uh, the first one, um, somebody wants to know if her uh, scallop potatoes really are fucked. Yep. No, they are, they are excellent. I take offense to anybody who would say my scallop potatoes are fucked. <laughs> All right, all right. Okay. Um, um, okay. Oh, uh, do you still want to marry Ricky even though he's your stepson? Oh, is he my stepson? Oh, uh, I must have missed that. Yep, sure, I'd marry him. He's cute and way smarter than he looks. Okay, a little bit of incest going on there, I guess. Um, in the right setting, nothing wrong with that. As long as it's not blood, it's okay. True enough, true enough, all right. Okay, um, again, we'll just leave the rest of that one alone. <laughs> so, uh, with Smokey, aka Randy, being male prostitute, and Mr. Leahy being sexually involved with him, Leahy and Barb having a living arrangement with both Randy and Jim, was she worried about catching the fucking, the fucking herp? Let's consider Sam the bisexual caveman. <laughs> <laughs> no, and Sam was never a real thing. I pretended to like him, that was all. Such a tease, Barb. Shelly, sorry, Shelly, Shelly. No. Um, how, uh, oh, how do you feel about older men? <laughs> Love them. And, and younger ones, too. <laughs> good to know, good to know. What, what are you doing later? Are we live now? Uh, we've been live for a little while, but, uh, you know, we can turn the cameras off after this. Unless you, you know, you're into that, but, uh... No. Let's finish the interview first, okay? Just, uh, make sure the wife doesn't hear that. Or, I mean, uh, no wife, yeah. Anyway, uh, moving along, moving along here. Um, what, what is the greasiest thing you have ever done? It's the things I didn't do that were greasy. So not telling. Okay, okay. Hmm. Was uh was knowingly having a romantic relationship with your ex-husband's bastard son the start of your decline into greasiness, or was it something else? Uh I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, okay. <laughs> Someone wanted to know, what is Barb's mating name? Uh, don't know what that is. Maybe. Barb, uh, uh, Mrs. Leahy, maybe? Yeah, Mrs. Leahy. Yeah, I could totally see that. I totally see that. Okay. Um, somebody wants, uh, somebody, okay, somebody put, uh, maybe a stupid question, but I'm just curious to know. Was all the alcohol on the show real alcohol? Like, was all of Leahy's drunk fits really him drunk? And did he really sit in a pool of liquor? No. Uh, not real at all. It's, it's fucking TV. We're not fucking people. We're, we're not, re you know, we're not real people off the TV show. It's not real liquor. It's not the real world. Thank heavens. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Although, I don't know, that world, it might be a lot more fun to live in than this one. You can get away with a lot fucking more, it seems. This interview's over. 
<laughs> Whoa. Keep in mind, all answers came from Shelly. You know, it was directly from her. It was just, we were just acting out the answers. It was just acting. But it was actually from her. Thank you, Shelly Thompson. Go check out all our links below, IMDB link. Go follow our Facebook, uh, or excuse me, follow her on Twitter. And yeah, just check out our website. Check out her work. She's fucking awesome. She's a cool lady. Thanks, Shelly. Beer man. He's here with a fucking new spe segment we're going to try out. We're going to take it over to Cribs with Beer Man. Beer man. Hey boys, it's fucking beer man back again. So I decided to do something different tonight. I'm not cooking. Because what I decided to cook was something you already seen. So I'm going to do something different. So you know the show Cribs. And they always show, uh, well, their crib, but. I have not much of a crib, so I'm going to show you my fridge. Apparently, it's pretty big on that show. So, let's check her out. Let's check out the freezer first. Freezer's fucking stogged. Lots of sales on this week, boys. Jane's chicken were on fucking dirt cheap. I got lots to keep me going. Got some fucking uh, girl guy cookies from my niece. The mint ones, the best ones. Down in the fridge, lots of beer, of course. Some water. Gotta have water with beer. Got some fucking eggs and lots of sauces. Gotta keep it spicy. Love the different sauces. So, yeah, beer, water. Some Pepsi for the, the old lady. That's about it. So back to you, Josh. See you later, buddy. That's fucking big pimping right there. Beer, and I don't know if you noticed, he had the NyQuil in the fucking fridge. Slip a little beer on the NyQuil. Or a little night wool into the beer. That's how you fucking fall asleep nice and easy. Thanks, beer man. Oh, fuck. Also in today's news, authorities say a fugitive sweet tooth helped police capture a wanted New Mexico man after he tried to take a donut without paying for it. Jesus, fuck. If you're wanted, don't commit little bullshit crimes like this. Fucking idiot. The Hobson News reports that uh, Gregory Mendoza was arrested Monday outside of a bakery after police received the report he stole a donut. Like, really stole a donut. Costs more just sending the cops than the donut's actually fucking worth. Maybe the cops, yeah, well, it is a donut, you know, the cop's gonna want to go for it. Police then discovered 30 year, 5 year old Mendoza was wanted on a number of charges, including cruelty to animals and traffic violations. Dick. New Mexico court uh, records show Mendoza has 10 pending charges out of Carlsbad Magistrate Court from July. Oh, he done fucked up. Mendoza also has charges pending in Las Vegas Magistrate Court, including aggravating fleeing a law enforcement officer. It is not known if Mendoza has an attorney. Somehow, I highly doubt he can afford an attorney on his own if he's stealing donuts. Down syndrome Dina. She's here with today's sex health report. Dina. And thank you, Josh. This is Down syndrome Dina with the sex news health report. I just had sex on the beach. The cocktail, not the actual fornication. Just for my luck. And speaking of which, I wanted to also explain why it is that I'm called Down Syndrome Dina. It's a fucking nickname that these assholes gave me because of the speech impediment. It has nothing to do with the illness. Jesus. Anyway, this comes to us from the University of Florida. Oh, yay. Higher education. Something Josh knows nothing about.
<laughs> and it seems that nowadays they're actually asking their students several pertinent questions having to do with their sexual behaviors. I, Down syndrome Dina, have decided that I too am going to take this test. Let's rock. Question one. Have you ever or are you currently having sex? Is that with or without someone else in the room? Next question. How many partners have you had? I'm still in the age. Let's face it. I got more chins than a Chinese phone book. <laughs> but the next question is, do you have sex with females, males, or both? I think if I had to diagram that sentence, it would imply that I have sex with chicks with dicks, which I've never had, unlike Josh, on a regular. <laughs> Do you have oral sex? Well, I certainly talk about it a lot. Does that count? Do you have anal sex? Jesus, what a pain in the ass that question is to answer. Do you use condoms, dental dams, or both? Well, I do use rubbers, and as far as dental dams, does that mean like taking my dentures out? Because I've done that. It's a no-denture adventure. Do you have symptoms, what is different than your normal experience? Well, I've had headaches on occasion, <laughs> but I'm not sure if that's a normal symptom. <laughs> have you ever had an STD? No comment. Does your partner have an STD? Well, maybe now. And then this last one, and I love this question, the way they worded it. <laughs> when was your last period, and I swear in parentheses it says, if you're a female? Who else has them? But my last one was probably around 1987. I'm old. This is Down Syndrome Dina with the Sex Ed Health Report coming to you from Florida. I'm out. Deuces. I'm offended by that. A hole is a hole. You know, as long as there's some fucking heat and moisture in it, I don't give a fuck. I, like I said, a hole is a hole. Thanks, Dina. I'll show Timo. He's here with today's fucking drunk news wrestling report. Show Timo. Show Tambo, Rift, the wrestling report. You see, this week, actually, first I want to get this out of the way. The golf dick, she know why. I got some mail from Big Joe's Rings.com. Tried to hide it from me. I can't believe he would hide 
the ring of my uncle, El Chapo. Like, are you kidding me, fucking Shayna White? That is my uncle. And you go and fucking take that ring and hide it? I knew what I was a fucking gift for Big Joe Spike and Rings. Like, fuck you, Shan Auto. Anyhow, today's wrestling report. I want to get onto some big news about some of my boys in the Bullet Club. Matt and Nick, the Jacksons, the Young Bucks, had a triple threat tag team match, ladder match, for the ROH tag team titles. Against the mortar machine guns or some stupid shit like that. And the defending tag team ROH champions. The Addiction featuring the Fallen Chris Angel and the Kazarian. A team I do enjoy but... But anyhow I just got fucking was one of the best locked matches of all times. In any fucking goddamn organization. Like I'm gonna believe it. Lots of high moves. High spots for sure. Now, Matt and Nick, I, they did the Bullet Club proud. They fucking brought those titles home to the boys. Now, there's three different title divisions in ROH. Well, guess what? Bullet Club has fucking two of them. So beat that, motherfuckers. Now, just remember, El Showtime and the Bullet Club are just too sweet. Holy fuck, black and white and fucking music. So, so time was fucking going Hollywood, Jesus Christ. I think he has a very special relationship with that broom. Flips it over, it's got pretty hair. I know what you're doing, buddy. I know what you're fucking doing. Thanks for time, Big Joe, he's back with today's fucking gambling report. Big Joe. All right, Josh, gonna buy my lotto tickets. Wish me luck. Here it is right there, 829. This is how they do it in Thailand. Take your tickets. I got my lucky number right there. If you win, I want a Ferrari, please. Thanks, Big Joe. What a fucking dick. And today's biggest fucking asshole, motherfucking cock -larg on ginger piece of shit. We have two teachers who were arrested for allegedly vandalizing a piece of public property close to their school. God damn, what is wrong with teachers this week? Police say the pair caused more than $1,000 of damage in Windsor. Windsor police say the new concrete was poured for a sidewalk on Main Street as part of a community beautification project, and that two area teachers chose to deface it. Tell me they fucking wrote their names in that. Jesus Christ. Authorities say 29-year-old Abigail Howard and 35-year-old Jennifer Riss were warned to stay away from the wet concrete and that both later to return to deface the sidewalk before fleeing for a nearby building after being approached by the project foreman. The woman reportedly drew what looked like a rat with the initials JR in the sidewalk. The police chief says both work at Foundations Upper Valley, a school with students for special needs in Windsor near the vandalized sidewalk. I'm thinking the teachers probably have fucking special needs too. The carbons caused approximately $1,500 in damage. <laughs> I really hope that was worth it. Howard uh, committed on the incident, uh, commented on the incident on uh, Facebook saying the drawing was supposed to be a dinosaur, something to engage her students during walks. She went on to say, in retrospect, it was pretty stupid, but I didn't realize I would be hurting anybody. It was a drawing the size of my hand. Unfortunately, it's on a 3 by 3 foot block of cement, which they claim now needs to be replaced completely. Thus, thousands of dollars of damage. <laughs> that was fucking brilliant. You know, fuck. What an idiot. It's, it's just, so let's just teach your kids, oh, you you know, it's not ours, but as long as it looks good on you, if you want to look at it, it's fine that you don't know, fuck up other people's shit. These bitches can go fuck themselves. Dakota 420. He's here with today's fucking drunk and stone fucking gold and silver report. Dakota. Thanks, Josh. What up, what up? This is the Cone 420 with today's stoned and drunk gold and silver report. Today, gold is at 12.56.51. That's up five dollars and twenty-five cents from yesterday. Today, silver is at 17.60. That's up twenty-nine cents from yesterday. Um. Let me just put it this way. In 1994, 
gold was at 325 an ounce. And me and my friends used to joke, man, we can either buy an ounce of fucking weed or we can buy an ounce of fucking gold. Let's go buy some fucking weed. I wish I would have bought fucking gold. I just got stoned instead of trying to make money. Um, the gap between silver and gold was very much smaller than it is now at 1250 and $17. That gap is going to narrow. Let me put it this way. You can get 400 pounds for about $100,000 at a discounted bulk rate this day and age right now. And four years from now, it's estimated that that silver will be worth $2.7 million and $400 an ounce. So at this point, I'm all about buying and selling or just buying, as a matter of fact. So if all you guys want to just get around and fucking drink beer and smoke weed like I do and just hold on to shit, that's what I do. I'm broke as shit, but I have gold and silver. And I plan on keeping it that way until the market hits that big number. And then I'm off to Costa Rica forever. Everybody buy silver. It's what's happening, it's what's gonna be happening. This is Cone 420 with the Drunken Stone Gold and Silver Report. Now, back to you, Josh. Y'all know you want some of these. Oh, fuck, I love money. Cone, send some of those precious metals this way, brother. I'll put them into good use and buy a lot of crack with them. Thanks, Cone. Corey's back, and he's here with today's fucking redneck tips. Corey. What's good, Drunk News? Corey here, and I just got off fucking work, and I'm really fucking tired, but I wanted to show you all how to properly organize a work van. See that? That is one sexy work van. I mean, look at that. You probably can't tell where fucking shit is, but I know exactly where everything is back here. You need duct tape to fix your shit? I got it. We got paint and everything. But yeah, um, it's payday, so I'm gonna go get some liquor money and get fucked up. Fuck off. Back to you, Josh. Hey, as long as you know where it is, that's all that fucking counts. Thanks, Corey. Jokerfish. He's here with today's fucking monster report. Jokerfish. What's going on, drunk news? This is Jokerfish with your monster report. If you ever see one of these flying around, Looks like this. You know, if they're flying around, you got yourself a Dracula. Now the problem is, is when you get one Dracula, and then another Dracula comes along, and he's like, Hey, what's up, Dracula? Hey, what's going on, my Dracula? What are you doing? Like, hey, look at that jerk down there. Let's go bite him. And they come down, and then uh, 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 you get bit. And then the next thing you know, you're at some goth club drinking blood juice. Listening to Susie and the Banshees and the Smiths. I want to listen to no Morrissey. Back to you, Josh. Dude, what if you get three fucking Draculars coming at you? What the fuck do you do then? Can you pit? Can you pit them against each other? Maybe you know two. It's a little hard. They decided working, but I'm sure three. You pit those motherfuckers against each other. Get the fuck out of there. Thanks, Joker Fish. Let's get fucking drunk. <laughs> In today's liquor news, teenagers are uh, now able to buy more than 13 pints of cider for the price of a cinema ticket, according to a new report, which says children are being put at risk by pocket money prices. Holy fuck, that is awesome prices. The study from the fucking, uh, oh, sorry, the fucking, I'm fucking the camera. The study from the Alcohol Health Alliance says supermarkets are selling alcohol at prices that are attracting children and harmful drinkers because of the absence of minimum prices. Pfft. Hey, free market fucking rules, bud. The research found the cheapest alcohol being sold at 16 pence per unit, far low a 50 pence limit which was being debated before being shelved by the coalition government. Consumers could buy two and a half bottles of the cheapest white cider, Frosty Jacks, containing more than 13 pints for the standard 824 pound paid for an off-peak cinema ticket. The study found. This is English stuff, so pints and pounds, I don't know what the fuck any of that means. We're just... Uh, the amount of alcohol purchased was equivalent to 53 shots of vodka for 8.24. Now I don't know the difference in the money, but $8.24 for 53 shots of vodka—that's pretty fucking good. 
So yeah, a bunch of people are complaining about it, studies don't, done, blah, 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 40 organizations, alcohol problem, they want this, blah, 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 nah, it's not even worth reading. It's just saying, booze is getting cheaper in fucking England if you need to get hammered on a budget, that's the fucking way to go. So yeah, that's all I fucking got, I guess. Big thanks to all our guests, go check out Shelly Thompson, go follow her on everything. She's a very nice lady. Cool as fuck. Thank you for answering our questions. Everybody else who's on the show, check out all the guests. Their fucking links are below. Go buy Liquorman's Whiskey. If you're in Canada. If you're in the U.S. like me, have a buddy that lives in the Canada that can buy it for you. Big thanks to Intrigue Board. Uh, don't forget our contest when we hit 1,500 subscribers. We're going to give away the liquor box. We got t-shirts and stickers for sale. That nobody ever buys, so I, yeah, fuck that. Um, yeah, that's about it. I hate to say, vomit. I'll see you, cunt suckers, next time.